Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, bringing you some exclusive uh, early battle footage from the upcoming Total War Warhammer 3 Kingdoms game. Uh, this is featuring the uh, DLC that you can pick up for free if you pre-order the game or get it during the early adopters time, which I think is in the first week of release, so I'm playing as the Yellow Turban. And uh, we had the ability to show you guys some campaign footage and some battle footage. And this is my battle footage. Um, I'm putting it on fast forward because there's only a certain amount of time that I have. Um, <laughs> there's like a time limit on how much footage I can show. And this battle is super duper long, but it barely fits within the time limit. But as I was playing my Yellow, Yellow Turban campaign, I had a game where it was literally... I am outnumbered by a lot. So I have about... Uh, I have a little over 3,000 troops, and my opponent has a little over 4,000 troops. So, I am significantly outnumbered, but to make things worse, I'm playing as the Yellow Turban. Which, that is a faction that's kind of primarily made up of peasants, essentially. And my enemy is being led by Liu Biao, who of course is actually a powerhouse of an early game character. And he has brought a lot of much higher tier infantry than me. Just because they're not peasants, they're actual genuine troops. So it's a lot of like light, uh, like, uh, light halberds, medium spears, um, way more archers than I do with like medium bow infantry and stuff. And then he's also got a, the garrison of a city I was attacking. Because I was trying to expand my empire and thought I was really, really safe. And all of a sudden, Li Biao shows up with his two... His two punk friends, uh, Huang Zong and Liu Kui, which I'm going to go ahead and apologize for all of my pronunciations. Chinese is not at all anything near a skill set that I have. So bear with me. I'll try and get better as the game is out because this is definitely a game I'm going to be playing. And this battle definitely plays into why. I mean, first of all, you got to note how gorgeous this map is. I mean, between the fact that the sky looks a lot more natural and really, really pretty than it does in Warhammer... And there's also just really, really cool effects going on, like these really intense but pretty, like, mist and fog effects. Um, it, I don't know, like, this this almost kind of feels like a swamp face map, just because of all the fog and, like, it's dark and the forest and all the lakes and stuff. But it's a gorgeous map, and all of the mountains in the background, and it's just super pretty. I mean, Granny of Warhammer is a lot more exaggerated. But I do wish the natural beauty was of this level. Granted, Warhammer's also a lot older. Uh, you know, Warhammer was released, what? It was released like four years ago now? Three, four years ago? And obviously this comes out in less than two weeks. So, uh, But yeah, game looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and get involved in the battle. Uh, first, kind of walk you through some things if, you're, if you've never even looked at 3K is that obviously the generals are not fantastical magical leaders who have godlike powers and yada 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 they are humans but i'm i am playing romance mode um there are two kinds of modes in the game there's records mode which is like everything is meant to be historically accurate so a lot of the characters will be just human they'll have bodyguards but like a straight arrow can still come in and kill off one of your characters right Whereas I'm preferring to play Romance Mode, which is based more on, like, the the legendary story of the Three Kingdoms, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, where your characters are kind of larger than life, and they have a lot of... And in Romance Mode, they do have special powers. So, like, um, some just to show off some of these, um, every character has, like, an archetype that they fit, which kind of dictates their abilities, though oftentimes they may have unique skills and abilities. Um, so, like, for Hige here, who is my faction leader, he has really, really crazy abilities, like, uh, okay, it's not gonna look at It's not gonna look at Just look at that. Annoying. Whatever. Um, oh, you can see it here. So, he's got, um, recovery, which makes it so that all of the generals that are fighting in this battle, so oh, Hige and then, uh, Himan over here, both have the ability to regenerate health. So every second they're re uh, regenerating uh, 25 health. And you're, you can see we're going to catch out this guy here. Um, we also have abilities like I have all fronts, which makes I my guys crush you for this insult. immune to fatigue and gives me melee evasion armor, which is so sexy. 
Um, being immune to fatigue is just great. And then he has another passive buff called One with the People, where he increases uh, melee evasion and morale for all nearby troops, which is basically like melee defensive leadership, if you want to think of it that way. But anyway, so Ready. knowing that our I'm general needs our aid. knowing that I'm outnumbered by over a thousand troops, and they also have way more commander characters than I do, because uh, I have a healer, which is he yay over here, and then I have two scholars, which scholars are essentially like they're decent melee combatants, but kind of what their their gimmick is is that they have really interesting they have a lot of really interesting buffs that allow them to. Um, do significant stat buffs to themselves or debuffs to enemies. Uh, meanwhile, over here, our enemy has three sentinel troops, um, these two kind of basic looking guys, and then also Huang Zong, which sentinels are basically guardian characters. Uh, they're kind of designed to like, they're kind of designed to protect your other characters either by using abilities to pin down enemies and like hold them back and generally they tend to be rather tanky then of course they have Yu Bao as their their faction leader and overall and he's a commander type which means not a very good fighter but he has a ton ton of leadership and general abilities and he's an excellent excellent army leader who like can do a lot of really significant morale boosts for all of these guys and then last they have Liu Kui and he is a vanguard type soldier which means that he is a brutal melee combatant but unlike the i think they're called champions um, champion characters you generally want to throw into melee and just kind of leave them there vanguard the characters are more about they running around no and like doing a uh, cycle charging essentially but in any event so knowing that i was facing a much superior force what i decided to do was use the terrain to my advantage just like in Warhammer, um, this fairly deep water, like waist deep water, will provide a significant debuff to any um, melee infantry that's trying to fight in it. So I decide to go ahead and make my stand here. I think it was a cloud. Look, the enemy circle. run! But, um, in any event, we, since we, we already did catch out one of their characters there, we also managed to run down an archer unit with that little death squad that got back there. And now the battle has begun in earnest. So we do have what people we can uh, in the front line. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton of shielded infantry, but I do try and just get the troops I know are going to hold out really, really well against the initial charges up on the front line. Because like I said, my guys are mostly peasants. So here, I'm desperately trying to move everyone into position, and we basically are going to plant our flags along this come on. shoreline. Surely you could do better. And dare them to come take me down. Oh, how witty! How very witty. I need to change these guys to have Chinese voiceovers. I think that's doable. Uh, thankfully, uh, uh, compared to the, the way the game was flees. earlier, based what on footage cowards. that I've seen, they the amount of talking the characters do is significantly reduced. Um, you can actually go a fair amount of time to anything. It's great because... So here you the battle seem lines to be struggling. have Need some help? crashed against one another. Amazing that you can both and talk we and are battle. In to the full fight now. So we have archers exchanging fire. I've got characters running in. He's got characters running in. He sent his vanguard character to slam into my lines over here. I sent both my scholars to keep each other safe and to maybe try and focus down the U-Bell, though he does manage to slip away from us. Uh, I am trying to get Himan here over to is suppressive fire ability, the enemy which you'll probably see go off at some, you'll see it go off a lot at this battle, but the, what it does is he basically fires out like three volleys of arrows that just explode and do like tons of damage and provide a significant debuff, but it might be a little bit before he fires it off the first time. But here you can see a really, really powerful buff goes down, 100% range block chance and unbreakable on all these troops coming from New Gal. That is an insane right down, general Dad. ability. Strike your targets. Uh, I don't have anything like that. But in any event, uh, now that I, uh, now that we're fully committed to the battle overall, arrows are flying both ways. Troops are uh, right. falling from both sides. My scholars are trying to hold the line. Uh, and of course, I'm slowly but surely making my way back to the battle line with uh, PA here and his yellow turret horsemen. 
who are my best troops. They're not that great, but they're my best troops. So they are riding south hard and fast, uh, trying to get to the battlefield so that I can start tearing through these archer units and of Our course support flee right here. the battlefield. Here you can see the fact that my army is almost entirely made of peasants and light infantry is really starting to turn Move against me. Quickly. Because those triple characters Destroy them. led mostly by the vanguard actually managed to push through my line here. So I'm kind of in an oh shit position because now there's this big gaping hole. Ah, here devil. you go. So that's the that's the volley explosion. Which look at that debuff. Minus 500 melee charge, minus 25% charge speed, minus 33% melee attack. That is awesome. In any event, though, unfortunately, uh, these troops did manage to push through. Thankfully for me, they're only light infantry. They're light axe and light halberd. Um, which light halberd don't do that great against infantry. Uh, light axe will, but I do have them significantly outnumbered in this back line. These archers should be able to push back the light halberds. And my troops are rallying back here, so they're going to be charging back into the fray. Uh, meanwhile, so the fighting just kind of is going to continue on at this point with people just slaughtering each other brutally left and right uh, as war may go. It's so nice to see standards again. You just see all these, uh, you see all these dudes carrying around flags. It actually, uh, the nice thing about there being so many flags is it's actually the easiest way to tell who is who. Um, the yellow cards. turbans are nice because obviously they have a lot of yellow coloration going on, so it's generally easier to see your troops. But even here, you can see my enemy has some uh, yellow uh, troops. But the flags are definitely where you can... The flags make it possible to see where your battle line is. So, uh, thanks to our characters and some spears getting some lucky hits, we do manage to uh, push back Wang Zong, and Hie has finally arrived. So our faction leader is charging into the fray now, and he comes plowing in. He does have a lot of really, really nice buffs that Look, the enemy run. make him exceptionally good at dealing with being surrounded. So you can see a lot of my troops around here are starting to get uh, buffs from him. We're pouring in archer fire on any troops that are facing their backs to us, so we can just do tons and tons of damage. My cavalry did run in here and are chewing through archers. Unfortunately for me, he has sent characters back to respawn. But since he has sent characters back to respawn, that does actually give my characters the ability to turn the tide in this battle. And I noticed that Yu Biao here doesn't have his bodyguards. So all three of my characters go right go, in go, to go. Uh, try and take him out. Unleash fury! These two basically run right at him. And then uh, Hige here uh, kind of waits for a more opportunistic... Oh, wait, no, that's Iman. You can see he's firing in his uh, ability Shit! there. He gets a beautiful uh, cross thing there. And then... I don't remember oh, who it man, is, but somebody somebody strikes him to kill him here in a sec. Who is it? All right, move! Oh, Fight! Bring it down! Bring him down! <laughs> There he goes. It was Himan, who's no wielding match. his maracas, as I like to call them. Note they are not maracas. My to my understanding, those are made out of steel or something and are very dangerous. But being someone who was, <laughs> grew up in Texas, whenever I see people holding two things like that, it's just like, they're maracas. They're just, they're just, they're just angry. It's deadly. It's deadly. But in any event, so we have managed to get rid of their commander. Um, and we also have gotten rid of one sentinel so far. So we still have two characters left to deal with, and a lot of his troops are um, have actually broken and then recovered. He does, of course, have some elite troops that are proving to be problematic, like these uh, infantry of Jing. They are actually probably the most problematic troops because they're fairly skilled combatants, but there are a lot of them. Trying to do what I can to bring some of them down, but they hurt. And of course, there are still a ton of archers left in the back line. Some of which still have ammunition. My right flank at this point has completely collapsed uh, due to some cap charges from the Saber Cavalry. And my left flank is about to collapse because I literally just lost my peasant warriors here. And the only thing I have left are archers and there's... Uh, well, I'm like, oh, there is there is one tiny group of uh, Militia of Virtue still standing. But archers are all that's holding off these cav and they break. So, oh, they shattered. So they're getting the hell out of dodge. And uh, at this point, my army uh, does manage to break the main core of his infantry, so I start pulling back to kind of redeploy my lines along the coast. 
And now my characters are charging in against his characters, and there are duels going on all over the place. This is just a battlefield of ultimate honor. Now, and you can see we're, we're doing everything in our power to force them to stay in the water. Because as long as they stay in the water, they're taking significant penalties to their stamina. Uh, Wang Zong here does manage to get uh, broken again, and I do commit some characters to pursue him to try and make sure he doesn't come back because he's probably the next most powerful character on the field. Uh, Liu Kui here is annoying, but he's not going to, like, make or break the day. Fight! So lots of arrows coming in. Uh, I'm trying my best to use my character's abilities. Like, oh, here it comes. Woo! All Attack! those arrow shots. Oh, beautiful. All right, so that does a ton of damage move, move. and causes a bunch of these units Fight. to break. Not to mention debuffing the hell out of any units that are still just standing around. Uh, and we continue uh, fighting to move. our best here. Uh, Huang Zong, I believe, has been... Uh, we rode him off the battlefield. We didn't kill him. But this entire time, the balance of power is still significantly against me. We're down to four, about 500 troops. Yeah, about 450. Talk. He's still over 1,000. Oh, there he goes. So he's running off the battlefield now. So we've got their leadership down to only two characters against my three. And one of them is Do not Meanwhile, my characters, thanks to uh, He Ye's ability, the whenever, they're, whenever they're not what engaged power? in combat, they've been passively regenerating Destroy health, them! Which is just so powerful. Buster! So we break off uh, Huang Chi here, and I'm Move trying to chase him away with Wu Da get him off the battlefield and now I'm committing my forces to try and deal with uh, Liu Qi here who's of course super annoying Destroy them! and he's actually really buffed right now because one of his relatives has fallen so he actually has a significant Show damage buff on top of some other stuff he does run away um, and at this point the battlefield kind of descends into mayhem because all that's really flees. left are a bunch of flame units cowards. and generals but here you can see just the sheer volume of death that has taken place on this on this shoreline. I think most of the corpses are actually enemies, but you can just see like the archer line. There's just nothing but yellow. But you can see that we actually held the line really, really well. It's just yellow Move. flags from this side back, to the minor exception. And then there's just a bunch of red flags in the water or on the Move. very, Move. very shore. So Unleash my men fury. held exactly where they were supposed to. Over here, we're fighting against this pocket of spear guards, but they are much, much better at fighting than any of my troops are, because once again, they're just poor, poor peasants. Over here, um, very similar situation, another high spearman unit with some axe infantry, but they're right. actually being supported no. by Wu Hua, so they do have a character holding them together. Meanwhile, over here, Hi Ye is dueling against a mass amount of infantry, but they're all just archers. So he should be okay. Shouldn't be any serious issues there. And we need to go ahead and hit the fast forward button just because we're running a little a short on time. Perished. Meanwhile, uh, Himan has ran off some more units off the battlefield. And the only character still holding up the leadership of the enemy army is, of course, Liu Kui. So I send in all of my characters against him. We get another volley there. All of my characters jump in on this guy and just start beating the crap out of him. I do manage to hit him with Judgment, which significantly reduces his melee damage. Look, the enemy run! And he breaks. Craven. And the moment he breaks, pretty much the rest of his army, which is all archers and other guys who are, like, exhausted and really, really tired, pretty much all of them down to a man uh, start to break. And you see the balance of power finally starts swinging up in my favor. But I will say, at least in this case, I do feel the balance of power is a lot more forgiving in that it allows you to have a really long, drawn-out... Um, epic battle um, compared to Warhammer which you know like if the balance of power was that significant against you at the start the odds of being able to do anything about it feel like they'd be really really low because you just get hit with uh, more significant penalties but maybe not I don't know um, I did have a ton of troops but in any event uh, we have managed to completely force back the enemy and with that the yellow turbans are successful we claim victory they still have more troops than us overall. I survived the battle. I went from 3,000 troops to about 800 troops, but he went from about 4,000 troops to about 1,000. So overall, it was a super duper fun fight. Um, I'm really, really liking the way this game is turning out. Uh, the campaign is actually my favorite part. The battles, the battles are good. Um, I, I definitely appreciate all of the insanity of Warhammer a lot more than the straightforwardness 
uh, 3K, even with the crazy powers you can get in romance mode. Like, you know, I really, really like magic and all that stuff. But for being a historical title, I am having a ton of fun with it. Uh, I'm getting a lot of, like, um, Shogun 2 flashbacks, especially on the camp actual campaign map. But in any event, that's going to do it for now. i got to get out of here because I hopefully didn't run over time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.